Okay. Uh, now we have Kazuki Sakurai talking about rebody entanglement in particle decays. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to thank the organizers to invite me to this workshop. Uh, so I'd like to present uh, very re recent work with uh, Michael. Uh, so I'd like. To, so this is about uh, entanglement in the three-body particle decay. Okay. So. Uh, in this talk, I'd like to uh, explain to you that in the three-particle entanglement has a very rich structure compared to the just two-particle entanglement, as uh, we, we heard in the previous talk. Uh, so if we have a three-particle ABC, then of course we can still talk about the entanglement between two individual particles, A and B, B and C and A and C, uh, as we are all familiar with. This is a usual entanglement between two particles. But we can, still, uh, we can also define some new uh, kind of entanglement, which is uh, entanglement between particle A and the rest of the subsystem. Uh, this is called one to other entanglement, and this is, very, this is new to the multi-particle system. Uh, also, we can discuss some interesting relation between this one to other entanglement and uh, individual entanglements. This is called monogamy. So it is described by this relation, and I'd, I'd like to um, come back to this later. And also, we can talk about the genuine three particle entanglement. This is entanglement genuinely between A, B, C. So this is a, a non factorization between even partially. For example, in this uh, state, the B, C are non-factorizable, but A is factorizable. So this is forbidden for this genuine uh, three-particle entanglement. And uh, in this talk, I'd like to study this kind of uh, three-particle entanglement in the decay, the, the three-body uh, three decay. For example, massive particle X decay to A, B, C, and we explore all possible Lorentz invariant interactions uh, for this type of decay. Okay, so let's uh, develop some mathematical device before going to the details. So, so this is, uh, so we have to first quantize, uh, um, quantify entanglement. So we can use some function called entanglement monotone. This is non-negative and non-negative uh, non function, and also non-increasing under the uh, local operation and classical communication. Sorry. And um, so one such uh, entangle entanglement monotone is called concurrence. So this works for the two qubit system. So to compute this, we, we take uh, density matrix and uh, look at the square root of the low row tilde, and row tilde is a spin-flipped version of the density matrix, and uh, we look for the four eigenvalues, and we compute this combination, and then uh, this C concurrence is zero for the no entanglement, and one for the maximally entangled state. This formula is a little bit complicated, but uh, if the state is pure, we can do much more simply. Uh, so we can first trace out one of the particles. Then if the system is entangled, this uh, reduced density matrix is highly mixed. So this means trace of row square will be much less than one. So you get the large concurrence. So for the pure state, we can use this formula. So now let's ask how can we compute the individual in entanglement. For example, let's say entanglement be between B and C, if you have a three particles. So the general three particle state, the pure state, looks like this. Uh, and um, so first, what we should do is to trace out particle A. Then we get the reduced density matrix B, C. And then we can use this standard formula because so now the state we are look, we are interested in the state of B C only, so we can calculate the uh, entanglement between B and C in this way, and also in the similar way we can define individual entanglement between A C uh, A, A B and A C. Okay, so 
Next, uh, how can we compute the entanglement between A and composite system B and C? So to, here we can uh, remember the, this simple for, simplified formula. So, um, so, so here we first trace out A, then the rest of the system is low B C. And we can use this, uh, so, so yeah, we can use this formula. So in this way, we sort of uh, regard this B C system as a one particle, and then we can compute the entanglement between A and this system. Okay, so we can also, similar way, we can define the uh, one to other entanglement B and C. Okay. So now we can talk about the relation between the, uh, this one to other entanglement and individual entanglements. So this is, this relation is so-called monogamy relation. So this is, uh, in the nutshell, it, this is basically saying that you cannot distribute this one to other entanglement into the two individual entanglements uh, more than it has originally, okay? And mathematically, we can derive these uh, relations uh, as we uh, saw in the previous talk. Uh, this is called monogamy uh, CKW inequalities. And we can also find uh, the equivalent relations for the B, uh, the one to other entanglement for the B and C. And uh, let's compare between the first two and the rest. So in particular, we find the same uh, factors here and there and here and here. So we notice that the sum of the two must be larger than the rest. Okay, so this, this is always true. And because C is non-negative, we can even remove these squares and we can derive this uh, relation. And the, having this relation, we can always construct some triangles, uh, as we saw in the previous talk, and this is called concurrence triangle. And this is useful to define the so-called genuine multiparticle entanglement. So, the, so this is the true entanglement between ABC system. Okay, so, not, so, so this uh, GME measure must satisfy the following properties. So this must vanish if the state is product, completely product state, or bi-separable state like this. So if this happens, this uh, genuine multiparticle entanglement measure must vanish. And also this measure must be positive for all non bi-separable particle states. And uh, also shouldn't increase under local operation and classical communication. And very recently in, in this year, uh, it was uh, proven that if you define the area in this concurrent triangle, this satisfies all three requirements. So we can use this uh, F3 variable. So this is a basically area of the concurrent triangle. And in this definition, F3 takes value between zero and one. And if it's zero, it is not entangled. And if it's one, it is maximally entangled. So this is done for the mathematical exercise, and now I'm talking about some physics. So here, our assumption of the decay is the following. So we uh, assume that all particles, so we, co we consider the three-body decay, zero going to one, two, three, and zero is massive particle, and one, two, three are massless. So this is the assumption. And also, all four fermions, uh, all four particles are spin one-half fermions. And um, we always go to the rest frame of the zero. So we do that. And also we can always take Z axis aligned with the uh, uh, momentum of the particle one. So we do this. And then we take X, Y plane such that Y is perpendicular to the decay plane. And uh, X is the direction to the particle two. So we fix the coordinate in this way and then uh, the rest of the parameter is the uh, decay angle between uh, one and two and one and three, theta two and theta three, and also the 
uh, direction of the initial polarization vector, which is n. Also, we have uh, polarization, the helicity of 1, 2, 3, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. Okay, and uh, what we do is we start with the uh, initial state. Uh, so this is a rest frame of the zero and polarization is n. And we expand it by, in terms of the final state. And the coefficient appears and uh, this coefficient is amplitude of this final state, which we can calculate in the QFT if we have interaction. And, uh, uh, and uh, so this is uh, nothing but the pure state of the three uh, spins, uh, three qubits. So we can calculate concurrence and uh, entanglement. Okay, and uh, we uh, look at most general Lorentz invariant interactions. So we write down interaction Lagrangian in this way and uh, gamma A is four by four so, so Dirac spinner is four components, so gamma A is a four by four so matrix with 16 parameters and we can have a 16 basis vectors, we can expand it. So, and also if we require the Lorentz invariance, we can have this scalar type interaction or vector type interaction or a tensor type interaction with sigma mu nu, sigma mu nu couplings. Okay, so let's look at the scalar interaction first. So in this uh, interaction, we have uh, some free parameter CS, CA, DS, DA. They are the interaction strengths. And uh, using uh, you know, Feynman rules, and at three level, we can calculate the amplitude. And we find four non-zero amplitudes. So the state is minus, 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 plus, 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 minus, minus, plus, plus, plus. And uh, the first observation is that the, this amplitude is independent of the decay angle. So whatever the decay, the state is this. And uh, we can also find that this uh, state can be uh, separable. We can separate state one from the, from the two and three. Okay. And uh, so, from here, we can immediately notice that the genuine multiparticle entanglement is zero because it is a biseparable state. And uh, because one is separated from two and three, we see that the uh, um, concurrence between one, two, one, three, one, two, two, three composite is zero. And we can also notice from this, uh, this part, the two, three are maximally entangled. So the individual two, three concurrence is one, okay? And uh, look, looking at the monogamy relation, we can work out the, what are the rest of the concurrences because the one, two, and one, three entanglements are zero and two, three are always one. So these two must be one, okay? So we can, so for the scalar case, it is uh, independent of the decay angle, always like this. So let's move on to the vector case. So in the vector case, we have this uh, projection operator PLPR and uh, the coefficient in front of it, CL, CR, DL, DR. Okay, so we use this uh, Feynman rule and calculate uh, amplitude at three level and we found four non-zero amplitudes and they look like that. And now it depends on the decay angles, okay? And uh, uh, we calculated concurrences and we found the concurrence between one, two, one, three are zero and two, three are like this. And one, two other entanglement we can also calculate like that. And uh, to look at monogamy relation, I define MI in this way. So then mi must be uh, greater or equal to zero. And uh, using these expressions, we can prove that m1 is equal to m2 and it is equal to m3. And it is coincides with c squared one and two, three. So because this is non-negative, the monogamy relation is truly very satisfied. Okay. And another thing we noticed is that 
uh, these coefficient vanishes if the um, if the uh, one of the vertex is purely chiral or purely left-handed or right-handed. So this uh, vanishes if one of DL, DL are zero, and this vanishes if both uh, C and D are purely left or right-handed, uh, and, uh, and like this. And uh, the, the conclusion is that uh, all concurrencies vanish for the weak decay. So unfortunately, in the weak decay, uh, we don't have um, uh, entanglement. Okay, and uh, some numerical studies. So here, uh, I fixed the, the initial polarization to the perpendicular to the decay plane, and we vary theta two and theta three in the decay angle. And the lower half plane are forbidden by the energy momentum conservation. And we see that if the C, uh, one of the particles is aligned to uh, particle number one, the genuine multi-particle entanglement is very large. And if it is a symmetric uh, uh, configuration, it vanishes. And uh, if you, so here, the initial polarization is tilted into the 45 degrees, and then the entanglement is somewhat reduced. Okay, so this is another numerical uh, study uh, for the, so, in, so for the upper plane, I fix the decay plane in this way, a decay angle in this way, and I rotate initial spin polarization starting from the Z direction and rotate in the ZX plane. So then entanglement changes like that. And here, I fix decay plane like this, and I rotate initial polarization in the ZY plane, and then entanglement changes like that. And here we see that, in general, the, two, the one to other entanglement for the particle two and three are much larger. So this blue dashed line is generally largest and re reached at the maximum value, but um, for other entanglements, it doesn't go to the maximum value and sometimes vanishes. And also another observation is that entanglement between two and three are constant. It doesn't depend on the initial polarization vector. Okay, so the last case is the tensor case. So in the tensor case, we can, we can find only two non-zero amplitudes and also, depend, it, also they are function of the decay angles. And uh, this state interpolates between the product state and maximally entangled state. So if one of the amplitude vanishes, it is product state. And they are, if MR is equal to ML, it is a GHZ uh, maximally entangled state. And uh, we, find, we, we found no individual two-party entanglements, so they all zero. And uh, this uh, means monogamy relation is trivially satisfied because right-hand right side is zero. And uh, we found one to other entanglements are all equal to each other, and it is like that. And um, um, genuine multi-particle entanglement is uh, given by this relation. Okay, and uh, the, another observation is that uh, these Entanglements are independent of the coupling structures. So they, they are independent of this W1, W2, or even CM, CE, DM, DE. Okay, and uh, here are some uh, numerical studies. So again, I fix the initial polarization to the perpendicular to the plane, and then the genuine, so always the system is maximally entangled. But if I Initial polarization is tilted to the 45 degrees, then it's, it is dependent on the decay angle uh, and also somehow asymmetric between theta two and theta three. And uh, here I have, a, a, again, I fix the decay, uh, decay angle in this way and rotate the initial polarization. And as you can see here, uh, the entanglement is much stronger than compared to the vector case. And uh, even three particle entanglement reaches at the maximum value. 
but uh, sometimes also goes to the zero. But uh, for this uh, case, it doesn't go to zero. Okay, so uh, in, for the discussion, so what can we do with it? So one way to use this result is to probably look for uh, or identify some theories which maximize or minimize entanglement. This is uh, some direction pursued by Ian and uh, our lecturers yesterday. And um, one can also use our result to measure, uh, experimentally measure the three-body entanglement, for example, for example, in the Hadron decay, like that. And, uh, but uh, to really study the Hadron decays, probably we should in also include, because in the previous, in our study, we assume that final states are all massless, but probably we should include some effect of the final state masses. And also, probably we could also look at some other spin structures, for example, scalar, fermion, fermion vector, or we can also include uh, sp spin three-half particle, uh, something like that. And also, we studied only the local, uh, we studied only the entanglements, but we could also study the non-localities. And as we heard in the uh, lecture yesterday, um, in the three-body system, the non-locality, the concept of the non-locality non is more complex. And uh, we could, for example, uh, use Marmin inequalities. So, so we can look at this kind of correlations. Or we could also look at Svetlichny inequalities, which is something like that. And uh, the difference between them is that for the Marmin equality can exclude local realistic theories, but Svetlichny inequality can exclude hybrid non-local local, local uh, hidden variable theories. Um, if you look at, uh, sorry. For example, hybrid uh, theory looks like this. So here, the uh, two systems are non-locally correlated, but one is locally correlated. So you could also exclude this kind of uh, uh, theories by this inequality. And uh, we are now working uh, on this uh, with uh, Michael and uh, Pavel. And uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Thanks, Kazuki, for the nice talk. Questions? Yeah, thank you for the talk. Really interesting. So, just to clarify, when you say scalar, vector, and tensor, it's always like the particle that decays to three other particles, yes. which in this case, every time that you took is three, all of the cases is three fermions. That's right? right. Okay, and you did mention that it's possible to look at some other decay products, not only three fermions. I mean, maybe it's a bit of a provocative question, but you know, can you say how more complicated things will be? For example, I don't know, you have two fermions and one, uh, one vector or something similar? Uh, how complicated? Yeah, I'm, I, I can only assume that it will be a lot more complicated. I'm just trying to understand uh -huh. how much. Uh, yes, uh, because I didn't do it, do it yet, so <laughs> I, I can't really answer to this question. But uh, I, I think this, um, the QFT part is uh, straightforward. But uh, this uh, entanglement part is, uh, I don't know if anybody studied uh, two fermion plus uh, one spin one or spin two entanglement. Because in the literature, usually people work on the n qubits yeah. or n qtrits. The hybrid case is not less explored. OK, thanks. So just a quick comment again about this uh, maximal minimal uh, entanglement. So you, you seem to find that uh, the maximal entanglement is in the tensor case. Sorry? The maximal entanglement that you find yes, is yes. in the tensor case. Yes, for which example, is not maximally entangled. Right, which is not in nature. Let's say it's not in the standard model, uh, at least at three level. Right. In a weak decay. 
Yeah, I mean, and then you find the minimal one is in the, like the top decay would be minimal and minimally entangled. Right. right. So, so, okay, so this is a counter example again of what uh, Jose was saying yesterday or, no? I mean, uh, yeah. from weak interactions at least. So weak interactions are those where there is a minimal entanglement. That's right. Okay, that's very interesting. So uh, could you also, I mean, with the same formalism, you could also do um, the case that Jose discussed in the beginning with the scalar to three, not spin off, but uh, qubits. I mean, uh, three photos mm -hmm. is like three, I mean, should be, no, no, not with the uh, fermions, but with the uh, qubits. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Okay, thank you. Hi, uh, very nice talk. Can we go back to the scalar interaction? Right, so you say in this case, one is now entangled with two and three, and two and three are maximally entangled, and uh, is if I, I, maybe I'm trying to I'm naive here? Is it fair to say that I, you can sort of see that from the Lorentz structure because you have a phi zero connect to phi one and, and phi three connect to phi two and and I can think of this as integrating now a scalar particle. So in a sense, you can think of this as a uh, psi one going to psi zero going to psi one plus a scalar, and then the scalar decay into psi two and psi three. In this sense, it, it seems clear that you're not going to have any entanglement between one and the two, three system. Is it fair to say that? I think so, yes. Okay. Uh, and, and, and I guess by the same reasoning, then it's not that surprising. Things get more complicated when you have the, the vector uh, interaction. Again, if I think of this as integrating now some, some heavy vector, then, then that could carry more entanglement. Uh, right. uh, but, but, okay, then I have a separate comment that is somewhat related to, to, to Fabio's, and I, I think that the comparison Fabio is invoking is not entirely fair, in the sense that uh, 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 we were looking at 2 to 2 scattering, and here he's looking at a 1 to, one to 3 uh, uh, scattering. So, so my question really is that uh, if I only look at the EFT or amplitude level, we know there is crossing symmetry. So the one to, two, one to three amplitude is just the crossing from two to two, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. and, and so is that suggesting that there is some relation between the entanglement in your, in your one to three case mm -hmm. with the entanglement in the two to two case, since the amplitudes are crossing related? Right. You see what I'm saying? So uh, that's why, again, in this sense, I feel that the comparison with two to, between 2 to 2 and 1 to 3 is, is probably not, not directly... Why not? I mean, I would say that it's exactly the same. Why? why? Uh, I, I, okay, I'll tell you why. Because uh, when we look at the, the, the entanglement, uh, we never consider entanglement in the temporal direction. And here, when I do the crossing, I'm moving a particle that, that is in the initial state to the final state, and vice versa. So I'm changing this, 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 this uh, temporal uh, uh, ordering of the particle. But, but if I only look at the three-body, uh, one to three decay, and when I look at the three-body entanglement, what does it mean when I do the crossing and move one, one of the particle? to a different, to the initial state. It's not clear what, what, what to do with that. The Lagrangian doesn't know, doesn't care. That, that's it, but that's exactly my point. There, there seems to be some, some, some statement one can make just from the crossing uh, uh, symmetry. But it's not clear what, what that statement is. Because I, I don't know what it means to talk about entanglement between initial and final state. What? 
Yeah, yeah, that, those are just final. Yeah, yeah, but, but I mean, when you, when you suppose now I cross two to the initial state, what does that mean in terms of this entanglement? I don't know. But anyway, these are just some questions. Yeah, maybe it's interesting to look at it, but I haven't done it. Well, on, on that point, uh, the, if one was to calculate the Choi matrix for the process, the Choi matrix for the process, then this I think would give you a relationship between the entanglement of a particle move from the initial to the final state for yeah, this system, and, and, and that might be worth exploring. Then, then, like, two, three, they should be related, I think. Yeah. yeah. And maybe just one other comment, which was, I, I think, because, okay, you, this is a very nice talk, but thank you. I th at some point you said the weak interaction gives no entanglement, unfortunately. Uh, but just to emphasize that if everything gets entangled, if everything, you know, it's very difficult to disentangle what's going on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> whereas if at least in some places there are projectors, then that actually helps one work out experimentally what's going on. So, I mean, the fact that there are some things which project out particular states is right. useful. Yes, that's right. Just maybe a quick comment. Uh, so, one can think about this paradigm. Here you have single particle that decays, right? But you may have already the, the two particles that get entangled. And then you may ask the same question, when one of them or two decay, and I think, I, I'm not sure, but I think then the LOCC paradigm would say that, that the, the, the decay is local, so the global entanglement is preserved between the two sets now of particles. But still there is an, a question, what are the, the combinations of, you know, of, of say, three-party entanglement from the two when one of them decayed or and so on and so forth. Thank you. Any other question? If not, uh, let's thank uh, Kazuki again.